I'm Dr. Jill Gale Howard at the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute at the National Zoo. I'm a theriogenologist and I focus on carnivore reproduction and to understand the biology of, the, of carnivores and especially felids and focusing lately on clouded leopards and to try to understand their, especially their reproductive biology to maintain genetically healthy populations in zoos and in the wild. I grew up in Texas and went to vet school at Texas A&M and came to the National Zoo in a, in a new program, a new training program for veterinarians to learn to do research and to try to understand the biology and, and re reproductive physiology of these animals. And I was really amazed how little was known about animals and this was not that long ago and then the breeding programs would put a male and female together. If they didn't breed they would try another male and I was shocked at how little you know information we had and how little help we could give. I just thought we could take some of this technology that's used in human infertility and start applying it to a dangerous species like artificial insemination and in vitro fertilization or test tube fertilization. But before we could do anything high tech like that we had to understand the biology of these species and that wasn't understood until we started studying them. I'm focusing on clouded leopards lately because it's one of the most difficult cat species to uh, understand and also to breed in breeding programs. So we always have had the problems of clouded leopards having um, severe male aggression and males killing and fighting with females and so it's hard to have a breeding program with with that behavioral um, aggression so we've been really interested in understanding what makes them aggressive and what also how we can can combat that problem uh, we've learned um, in our recent years studying them at the um, conservation biology institute and also in our program in thailand where we have very genetically valuable animals left and just how to get them together, how to, how to create breeding pairs, and it ended up that it, if we uh, could put cubs together at a very young age, even six to nine months of age, and pair them up that early and they literally grow up together, then that stops the male aggression. And it's really turned around the breeding program um, in the United States and also in Thailand. The cloud leopard is one of the 36 wild uh, felids we have, and it's a very um, beautiful cat, kind of medium-sized cat. They have very unique anatomical traits in that they have a long tail, they love to climb, and their habitat is, is tropical forest in Southeast Asia. All cats are not the same, and which is interesting because you think everything's like a domestic cat. And each cat species is really different, and t the clouded leopard is turning out to be even more different than the other cats. We were able to uh, collect samples for health and reproduction and genetics on cats all over the world, and we ended up evaluating several cats um, long ago in, in Borneo. And it turned out that those samples that we collected and banked for years in the freezer uh, led to the discovery of a new clouded leopard species. And so now we have two new uh, two species of clouded leopards and one being very recently um, discovered in this in this century. I think everyone loves to see these beautiful animals and want to keep them around, but the world is really very integrated and connected and, you know, if we lose this species, that means we probably lose other species in the forest, we may lose the forest altogether, and it will affect the human race eventually. And I think um, most people just want to want to be able to see these animals, want their future generations to see these animals, and they're unique and nothing's going to replace a clouded leopard.